We're all familiar with the effect of adding potassium hydroxide into water and then testing with a conductivity meter. This is standard practice. So if we dissolve some potassium hydroxide pellets, into water, and then if we took these leads that are in the test tube and immersed those leads into this beaker of potassium hydroxide solution, we know that, a, that the, uh, con the electrical circuit that we've got set up here will be complete. For example, there are, there are potassium hydroxide pellets here this is a buzzer, a 9-volt battery. And well, let's show you that uh, the buzzer, if we short out this system that way, the buzzer works. And now there's no connection. The two leads here are not connected to each other. If we put those two leads into this solution, the buzzer would go off. And we talk about potassium hydroxide as a strong base. We talk about hydrochloric acid as a strong acid. And they would both conduct electricity to uh, uh, turn on the buzzer. Strong and weak. Now how about dilute and concentrated? Uh, how about ionization and dissociation? I get confused by these terms, so do my students. So let me start at the beginning. When potassium hydroxide pellets are dissolved in water, the potassium hydroxide, the potassium ions and hydroxide ions are each hydrated. They're separated by water. Um, when, now what kind of process is that? It's a formation of ions, I guess. Uh, but it's only the formation of ions if the ions weren't there to start with. If the ions were there to start with, the process would be called dissociation. And that's, where, that's what we're going to try and demonstrate today. Potassium hydroxide pellets are in the test tube. The melting point of potassium hydroxide is around 100 degrees Celsius. I have to apologize, I don't remember the exact melting point. Uh, if we light the candle, if we light the candle and heat the potassium hydroxide pellets in the test tube, and don't mind the black color, that's just the candle flame depositing carbon on the uh, isn't that beautiful? It doesn't take much heat to melt a little bit of potassium hydroxide sufficiently to start the buzzer. And why does the buzzer, why does the buzzer stop again? And get louder? Now, how long will that go on? If we can pause so I can get an ice cube. And here we have an ice cube. And now if we heat it again with the candle flame,
When you heat potassium hydroxide, even with a candle flame, the melting point of potassium hydroxide is low enough that the liquid potassium hydroxide forms. And since the buzzer went, the buzzer uh, went on, we know that the ions must have been present there before. Because in solid potassium hydroxide, the buzzer didn't, didn't work. In potassium hydroxide solution, the buzzer would. Uh, but we didn't put any water in here. So we didn't have any reaction occur except the moving apart of potassium ions and hydroxide ions from each other, free movement in the system, they dissociated. The potassium hydroxide dissociated and becomes a conductor of electricity. In this case, in the water, potassium hydroxide ionized in the water, while well, also dissociated. It's hard to know. If we use the substance that uh, did not uh, exist in ion form, in, in solid or liquid form, and dissolved it in water and had it react with water, that would be ionization. A good example would be hydrogen chloride gas. Hydrogen chloride gas is covalent. Uh, when, you, when you put it in water, it ionizes, it uh, dissolves, ion, it reacts with the water to form hydrogen ions and chloride ions that weren't there before the water was added. Ionization, dissociation. Uh, strong, uh, strong and weak refers to the degree of ionization. For example, the comparison of hydrochloric acid and acetic acid. Concentrated and dilute refer to quantities of solute per unit volume. So concentrated sulfuric acid contains more sulfuric acid than dilute sulfuric acid. We have to keep those terms organized in our own mind. Dissociated, dissociation, ionization, strong, weak, concentrated, dilute. In the test tube, uh, at this point, we have a one-hole rubber stopper. At this point in the test tube, we have a two-hole rubber stopper. The potassium hydroxide pellets were originally put in the test tube to a depth of about uh, just under a centimeter. The two leads that are connected to the yellow and black alligator clips are paper clips, large paper clips, that were opened up to form electrodes. One of the paper clips was inserted through the two-hole rubber stopper and around the outside of the one-hole rubber stopper. The second paper clip was inserted through the other hole in the rubber stopper and it went through the one-hole rubber stopper. Uh, so that, and the, uh, the uh, stopper was lowered into the test tube in order to keep the two electrodes apart, separated, so they didn't create a short circuit. 